Hey everybody, welcome back to the Binary Search Tree Project in C++. In the last video, I went ahead and created a deconstructor for our Binary Search Tree class. And I went ahead and just put the code up right here as a reference. And in this video, I'm going to give a visual demonstration which shows how our deconstructor performs a post-order traversal to delete all of the nodes in our tree. So I've got two functions up here. I've got the deconstructor function here, which simply calls the remove subtree function and passes in the root pointer. And then the second function is the remove subtree function, which passes in a node pointer and performs the post order traversal. So all the deconstructor right here does is it simply calls the remove subtree function, which is below here, by passing in the root pointer. By passing in the root, we ensure that we delete the root and everything underneath it, therefore deleting the entire tree. So if we take a closer look at the remove subtree function, we'll see that it's performing recursion. So here it calls itself the remove subtree function, passing in the current node's left pointer. And once again, it calls itself another time here, passing in the current node's right pointer. When it can no longer recursively move left or move right recursively, then we print a message to the screen saying that we're going to delete the current node. And then we go ahead and delete the node that we're currently pointing to. The deconstructor gets called automatically whenever one of our binary search trees goes out of scope. So when that happens, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to call this deconstructor function here. And all it's going to do is it's going to call the remove subtree function starting at the root. When that happens, this node pointer that's passed into the remove subtree function is going to point right here at the root node when the deconstructor is first called. So currently, as far as we're concerned, the node pointer PTR here is pointing to the root node. So it goes ahead and enters the remove subtree function and we are pointing to a node. So we go ahead and enter this if condition here and it checks to see if our pointer currently has a left node. And we do, so we can go ahead and enter this if condition as well. So this if condition says, go ahead and call yourself, but pass in the pointer to that left node. So now you can think of this as starting a new process here. So now as far as we're concerned, the node pointer PTR in the second process is pointing to node 21. So now PTR in this case starts at the top, goes down, enters that same if condition because it has a left child. So then it calls another instance of this method, passing node 21's left pointer in this time. So we can think of this as starting another process here. So now we're looking at this guy right here and he also enters the top. He's pointing to something, so he comes in here. He has a left child, so he comes in here. Then he calls a remove subtree by passing in his left pointer which now points to this guy right here. So now the pointer pointing to node two starts at the top. It is pointing to a node. So we go in here, we check to see if it has a left node, but it doesn't. The pointer that's pointing to node two skips over this if condition, moves to the next one, and it says, yep, I have a right child. So let's go ahead and enter this if condition, which starts another call to the remove subtree function and passes in a pointer to node three. That's this pointer right here now. So this pointer now gets passed in to the new call of the remove subtree function. It does not have a left child. It does not have a right child. So now it's finally down here. It goes ahead and it prints deleting node containing key. Then it looks at the key. The key in here is three. And then it goes ahead and deletes the node. So the first node that gets processed is node three. Now that the remove subtree function that started with node three is done, then we fall back to the method that was called with this pointer pointing to node two. And if we remember, we've already checked to see if it had a left child. We've already checked to see if it had a right child and that's what sent us to node three here. So now node two finally gets to fall down here, prints that it's deleting the node containing two and goes ahead and deallocates that memory for node two. So we're processing node two. So now we fall back to the method that called the method that passed in the pointer to node two. And that method just finished looking for a left child. So now it gets to look for a right child. Since it has a right child, it goes ahead and calls the remove subtree function. And this time it's passing in a pointer to node 15. So the remove subtree function is now called with a pointer pointing to node 15. It checks to see if it has a left child and it does. So it calls the remove subtree function with a pointer pointing to node 14. So the remove subtree function with a pointer pointing to node 14 checks and it sees that 14 does not have a left child. It does not have a right child. So after that, it goes ahead and deletes the node containing key 14. So now 14 is being processed and now node 14's memory is deallocated. So the remove subtree function that passed in a pointer to node 14 is now finished. Before that, we were in the middle of the remove subtree function pointing to 15. So now it checks to see if it has a right child. It does not. 
So it goes ahead and deletes the node containing 15 next. So that memory is now deallocated. It falls back to the remove subtree function that passed in the pointer pointing to node four. Four is done looking left and right. So it deallocates the memory here. So four was the next one processed. So we fall back to 21. 21 is already checked left. Now 21 is going to check right by calling the remove subtree function with the pointer pointing to node 32. Now the remove subtree function that's pointing to node 32 checks left checks right, doesn't have any children, goes ahead and deallocates the memory. So 32 has been processed now. So now we fall back to 21. So 21 has now checked left, it's checked right. So now we go ahead and do the third step, which is to deallocate the memory corresponding to node 21. So now we're back to node 50. So node 50 has already checked left, but it hasn't checked right yet. So we call the remove subtree function with the pointer to node 50's right pointer, which is node 76. Node 76 now looks left and it has a child. So then we go ahead and call the remove subtree function again with the pointer pointing to node 64. Now the method looks at 64's left child. It goes ahead and calls the remove subtree function again with a pointer pointing to node 52. 52 looks left, looks right, doesn't have any children. So the memory in 52 is now deallocated. We fall back to 64. 64 has already looked left, so next it looks right. It calls the remove subtree function with the pointer pointing to its right child, which is node 70. Node 70 looks left, looks right. It does not have any children, so now the memory for node 70 is deallocated. So we fall back to 64. 64 already looked left, it looked right, so now we go ahead and deallocate the memory for node 64. Fall back to 76. 76 has already looked left, but it hasn't looked right yet. So looking right, it has a child. So we go ahead and call the remove subtree function with a pointer pointing to node 100. Node 100 looks left. So we get a pointer pointing to here with a new remove subtree call. 83 looks left, has a child. So we call the remove subtree function again with a pointer pointing to node 80. 80 looks left, looks right doesn't have any children. We go ahead and deallocate the memory. So now we fall back to 83. 83 has already looked left. Now it looks right. It has a right child, so it calls the remove subtree function with a pointer pointing to its right child, which is node 87. 87 looks left, looks right, doesn't have any children. So we go ahead and deallocate the memory associated with node 87, fall back to 83. 83 already looked left, it looked right. Deallocate 83, fall back to 100. 100 already looked left, so then it goes ahead and looks right, but it doesn't have a child. So then we do the third step, which is deallocate the memory corresponding to node 100. We fall back to 76. 76 has already looked left, it's already looked right. So then we go ahead and deallocate 76. And then finally we fall back to the root, which has now already looked left, it's already looked right. So now the original remove subtree function with a pointer pointing to our root of node 50 finally gets to complete after all of the other remove subtree function calls have completed. And at the very end, we deallocate the root node with key 50. So in a nutshell, that's how the deconstructor is working. We're simply performing a post-order traversal, which recursively moves left and moves right if possible, then goes ahead and deletes the current node that was passed into that instance of the remove subtree function. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Have an excellent day. Stay tuned for more videos. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.